Hey, my name is Andrew McLaren. I'm going to help you get your teacher loan forgiveness up to $17,500 if you're science, math, or SPED. For most people, it's $5,500, but this really does apply to a whole lot of people. So I want to talk about who this applies to in some situations where you might not want to go for it. Um, then we'll talk about the difference between high need school and Title I, because that's a common misconception around here, as well as the process that you need to go through and two other grants that are really easy for you to get that are kind of similar or sometimes confused with teacher loan forgiveness, at least with the TEACH grant. And then this AFSIA grant is just basically free money, in my opinion, so I want to talk to you about that as well. The teacher loan forgiveness program is really there to get teachers in schools where we're having shortages, which are called high need schools. It's kind of similar to Title I, but more schools qualify for this. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about what exactly qualifies a school for this in the next part. Um, but in terms of teachers, you if you teach there and you're teaching like language arts, you can get 5,500 forgiven. If you're teaching science, math, or SPED, you can get $17,500 forgiven. So there's more front money being forgiven for those subjects because there's a bigger shortage of those teachers. So they're trying to essentially pay them a little bit more while also keeping like the union pay schedule uh, the same for everyone. So it's kind of kind of weird, but they're trying to essentially pay science and math people a little bit more. In both cases though, this is really important to me that you keep in mind the cost of living at the school because um, some schools might pay you more, but there's a higher cost of living. Um, and so those schools might actually a, be a better financial situation for you than going to um, like a high needs school. So you have to kind of look at how does the, the high needs school that usually has a very low base pay, if you were to add on about like $3,000 per year, um, does that get you to a comparative financial situation if you were to teach at just a richer school that's going to be paying you quite a bit more as well. So you have to kind of look at this in depth and think, is this actually going to be worth it for me in this school situation? Most of the time, it, it just barely kind of works out in favor of this. Or if you're going to work in one of these schools anyways, it acts as a nice financial bonus for you. Um, Something really important to keep in mind is that this can be a really bad idea going for this loan for some people. So if you never plan on paying off your student debt, uh, you if you're planning on getting the public loan forgiveness after 10 years, then do not go for this loan forgiveness. It, it will mess it up. Basically, you've got like two options. Either one, you um, try and go the for the public loan forgiveness, which requires 10 years of payments, and you don't have to pay off the debt, it's just gone. But then teacher loan forgiveness is that after these five years, you get the 17500 but those five years of payments no longer are qualified for the public loan forgiveness. So you're not going to get all of your loan forgiven after 10 years if you decide to get part of it forgiven after five. What this means is that you may end up paying more money by trying to pay off your debt using this and then doing like aggressive payments to get the rest of the debt down versus um, just paying the bare minimum and getting the whole thing forgiven after 10 years. So if you're thinking that you can use the 17500 to get it down close to zero at that five year mark, then do this. But if you're like, that's not going to even get rid of like a third of my debt at that point in time after paying off all of these payments, it makes more sense just to go for the, um, the lowest payment and just get the public loan forgiveness. So just kind of keep that in mind. You know, I'm also, I'm not a financial expert, but this is what I found for myself when I tried to calculate this was that it made sense for me because my debt was low enough that I was able to use the 17500 to get me down to a manageable point to just pay off the rest. And then that total amount that I paid would be less than if I'd just been paying for 10 plus years. Um, yeah, it's, it's a balancing act. It's hard to say exactly what will work out, but for most people, this is a, a good thing to go for. Um, 
but it might not depending on how much debt you have because it might mess up your 10-year loan forgiveness which you, you don't want to do <laughs> so it's really important to clarify that there's a lot more high need schools than just the schools that have title one funding so i was at a school where none of my coworkers and my boss didn't know that the school actually was qualified and I was able to apply and I was correct and I was able to get this loan forgiveness and other people started doing that as well because now we knew that. So the real way to know if your school qualifies or not is if you go to the teacher loan forgiveness uh, page on studentaid.gov, there's a ton of information here and they tell you all about the exact requirements in the loan and all that stuff. Um, most loans, if it's like, um, those public loans from the government, you can usually get those uh, to be included in here. You might need to consolidate them. There's a couple tricks that you might need to do. But this directory, the Teacher Cancellation Low Income Directory, this is what determines if something is um, high needs or not. And it's determined by your state. So states ha have submissions that they give to this one database. And you can go on here and you can search for your school and try and find it. Now I had a hard time at first trying to find the school that I was at. And so you can see on here, if you do like Oregon, and like maybe like one of these years, and you just search, they'll give you like all of the schools in that state. And the locations, they need to be like precise in the wording. So you need to say like Lane, if you wanna get something from there, or like Moro, right? So it's one of those things that you have to actually be kind of precise um i think yeah lane not there but here i believe yeah so like these are all in the location of lane and so there are you can kind of find your schools based off of that and it's kind of hard honestly to find your school i've i've been having a hard time with some of them sometimes but you can see like okay yeah like this school qualifies and that school qualifies right and there's a lot of schools on here that um might not be title one schools um that are actually on this list so like in for example in springfield there's only one of the middle schools that actually is title one but you can see like i believe all of their middle schools are going to be on here so it's it's a little bit different than what is gonna what's title one qualifications and what gets you on here and I'm not sure like generically what determines if they're on here or not, um, but it's probably looking at some stats on the report card and um, student performance and that kind of stuff, right? Income level of families and that, all that info that they can look at at the state level. Just know that it's fairly easy to qualify for. In addition, you only need to have it be for one of the years. So some of these schools may not be um, there for some years and they may be there for different years so like I remember there was one school that I was at where it was like 2014-15 showed up but 15-16 did not show up here and so you need to um, just kind of check all the years as well as searching for your school so just keep that in mind that you only need it to be qualified like I think some of them changed there it only needs to be qualified for one year. So if it's on this list for one year, then you're golden. You're totally good um, for teaching there to get this qualification. Also keep in mind that all the stuff is ultimately handled by your loan provider. So you need to check with them and contact them about the process for this um, and prove to them that your school does qualify because the, the loan provider, they didn't know if my school would work or not. And then I needed to show them, yes, it's on this list, um, it qualifies. And so they were able to then at that point move forward with the application. But I needed to do a little bit of collaborating with the loan provider to clarify that, yes, actually the situation does work for this. So the process for this is actually very, very simple. Um, you just work at a high needs school and clarify that it is actually a high needs school by checking that list that I showed in the last section. Um, and then you contact your loan provider and let them know you're going to apply for teacher loan forgiveness. Usually they have on their website some online application. It's a little bit different with different uh, online providers. But in the end, they're going to give you this form. 
And basically this form is something that you fill out and you just give to your administrator and your administrator confirms, yes, this person taught here, they taught these subjects. Um, and like I, as the administrator say, this person actually worked here. That's basically all it is, is them having some someone that they know is in charge of the school confirming that you worked there. Um, you do need to do this each year. There's a certain annual deadline um, they do say that the loan application can be denied if you don't do that. I've been told that some people didn't do this every year. They just su submitted the application after five years and still got the loan forgiveness. That recommends just doing the yearly if you can, but also don't think that you've been disqualified if you didn't do that. Um, I would still try and apply at the end of those five years and see if you can get it. Um, and then after that, and with that last one, once it's submitted, it just gets taken out from your account. It's pretty cool. It's a good moment. <laughs> so there's a bonus I, I wanted to talk about. There's also the teach grant, which is very often confused with the teacher loan forgiveness. Um, most of the loan providers will actually double check that you're applying for the right one. You can get both at the same time as well, which can be kind of confusing. The teach grant is basically a loan is what I think of it as, which also makes this confusing. So this is money that you can get while you're in school trying to become a teacher. So it's a grant, but it's converted to a loan if you don't teach for four years. Um, and you have to do that within eight years of getting this um, teaching license. So you can get $4,000 per year. Um, my master's program was in like the summer school year and then another summer. So it technically kind of for two years. So in my master's program, I was able to get $8,000 just forgiven and paid for. Um, you could, in theory, do this while you're in undergrad as well. If you're intending to become a teacher, there is some things where it has to be a, like a university that partners with uh, the government to do this teach grant funding like this. But um, you should be able to do this in undergrad, in theory, at least. So don't take this unless you know you want to be a teacher though because it converts into a loan or i should say don't unless you're planning on being a teacher or you would have to take out that loan um, anyways because this just turns into a regular loan and you do have to pay the interest for all the years so you might have a much bigger loan than you thought and it may have ballooned up quite a bit if it's been 10 years since you took this um grant so just keep that in mind that if you choose to leave before four years of teaching, you're going to have to owe this money back plus interest. I don't like that fact, but it's just kind of what it is. So I would say don't take this unless you need a loan anyways um, and um, you're planning on becoming a teacher. Okay, Not a big deal if it ends up turning into a loan and you decide to not be a teacher. But don't take this grant if you could fund it um, otherwise. Like, it's not free money. It, it is kind of tied to that interest. So just beware. Um, there is also this AFSIA grant, which is a little bit different. Like, the TEACH grant is the uh, same sort of thing like the federal student aid. And they've got a ton of information about, like, the TEACH grant here. Um, but the... Uh, the AFSIA... This is, the, I think it's the armed forces, I believe. And so it's basically money for STEM coming from military funding, which is kind of like interesting. But I think I got, I believe it was 5K while I was in school and then um, another $1,000 for two years afterwards. And they've kind of changed how they've packaged these things since then. But you can still get scholarships, like these ones for teachers. Um, so you can get like, I think it was $2,500 for get, um, paid for. And from what I remember, this was very, very easy to apply for. And they accepted me. And I was not able to get like any other grants. Like I didn't qualify for the mo most of those various things that you would get, right? So this was my way in of getting some funding. Um, so you can get that scholarship maybe a little bit easier than some other ones. And it's for all teachers, um, as long as you're going into science, technology, um, or math. And then there's also some grants that they have for the classroom, which people don't realize. So this is pretty good chunks of money, $3,000. Um, 
two thousand dollars, you know, so on and so forth that they've got. And these are, I think, people just don't know about them. Um, so I've found that they're a little bit easier to get than some other some other grant money. Okay. All right. That's it. Thank you for joining me. This has been Andrew McLaren. Thank you for McLearning with me. I've got a few more offers that I'd like to let you know about. And remember, like and subscribe. For each video on YouTube, I am making an interactive version using HP5. These will be for sale on Podia. And if you click on the link in the video, you should be able to go directly to that product. I also have two demos I'm going to be linking so you can kind of see what they, these products look like. Um, so I would recommend checking out those demos. I also offer one-on-one -on -one remote tutoring through Wyzant. Please use the links that I have linked below. That way I can get 100% of the uh, hourly rate as opposed to 75. Each video also has a link for my Patreon, and you can join at the $3 level to get some resources I use for tutoring and, or to support the channel. And I also have a $5 raffle level, which you could either get some free online tutoring or five uh, interactive lessons for free. You choose which ones. And then I also have my Teachers Pay Teachers, which has some old lessons that I made from when I used to be a teacher. I may be adding to that. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope that you learned something.